A wake-up light is an interesting device that gradually turns on the lamp in the morning to help you wake up. Now, there's a couple of these on the market already, but most of them cost more than $100 and don't really output a whole lot of light. So that's why in this video I've decided to make my own wake-up light from scratch with cheap components and a home-designed 3D printed case. As usual, I'll post links to the code and 3D assets in the description. Here's what I'm going to be using for the circuit. I'm going to need a few more components later because I haven't actually made the case yet. And that's because I want to connect everything together first so I can see how big it is. And then I will design a case for that. So what I'm going to need for this is because I want to power this with 12 volts because these LED cobs use 12 volts. It's a step down converter, a bucking converter which is uh, a lot more efficient than if you were to use a linear voltage regulator which converts it to heat. And uh, then I'm going to have uh, an amplifier. This one is from Adafruit. And this is for the uh, audio, for the noise sounds that will be playing. And then to connect that stuff I'm going to be using uh, this small prototype board which I believe is from SparkFun. And for the digital clock part of it I'm going to be using this module can't remember exactly what these things are called. And for the microcontroller I'll be using uh, the ESP32 because I want it to be able to synchronize uh, time from the internet. So I don't actually have to set the time myself. Just to have it automatic. For the buttons I'm going to need uh, two 10 kilo ohms resistors which I'm going to be using for a pull down. Obviously some wires. And then I'm going to be using two of these lam lamps which are uh, 12 volt LED cobs. So then they're rated at uh, 500 milliamps. And uh, in order to run these without overheating, I'm also going to need a heatsink. So uh, I got this uh, aluminium one. One more thing that you're going to need is a transistor. And in my case, um, I've opted for a MOSFET. You can also use uh, regular bipolar NPN transistors for this. But you have to be aware that uh, your LED cobs are probably going to uh, pull more current than... Uh, a single NPN transistor can handle. Obviously you could just use two of them. But uh, I've opted for, for a MOSFET instead so I only have to add one. And in my case I've uh, picked this MOSFET. I think it's the NTD4808N. And uh, you can take a look at the maximum ratings and see that uh, drain to source voltage and gate to source voltage are clearly within the bounds of my project. And uh, what you really want to look at is uh, the uh, continuous drain current and in this case the max rating goes up to uh, at the 25 degrees celsius it goes up to 13.8 uh, amps which is way more than I need but uh, th these are <laughs> pretty good MOSFETs I really like these but you, you can't just look at that you also have to take a look at uh, the performance curves and uh, especially the drain current one because he here you see the different voltages that you're actually feeding into the uh, gate of the MOSFET and uh, in my case, I'll be feeding it 3.3 uh, uh, 3 volts ish, which is uh, between 3.2 and 3.4 here. But uh, even so, if you look at the uh, current in amps, uh, even at the 3.2 volts and uh, even at uh, low drain to source voltages, you can still output uh, 10 amps, which is way more than I'm intending to. So this one will, is a little bit overkill, but it's definitely going to work. 6 watts don't exactly light up a room, so I'm gonna go with at least 2 to start with, and maybe 3 later on. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe these, uh, the backs of these off to make sure they're clean. And uh, it's a little bit of a ghetto solution, but I will be holding these two together with super glue. However, I'm also going to be using uh, some regular uh, cooling paste just to make sure uh, the heat actually transfers into the heat sink. I think that should be enough. Then I'll put some glue on the edges. Let's see if I can attach this without getting any glue on my fingers. This glue is extremely strong.
Okay, now all I gotta do is wait until tomorrow. For the case, I have printed three components. This one is going to sit on the front. It's going to go through the big one and sit like that, and uh, that's where the lamp is going to go through. Then I have this on the back. Essentially what you do is you uh, put the LED cob in there, and then you put screws through uh, these two holes, and uh, for that you're going to have to uh, make some screw holes in the aluminium. We're also going to need a couple of screws for this, and uh, a JST connector. And for the screws, I have gone with some standard uh, M3 screws and also some of these uh, that you just screw in manually. And these will go for the to keep the back part on, and these will keep the front part on. And we'll also need uh, a bit of glue to keep the uh, JST connector on. Next, I need to make sure the cob is roughly centered. So I'm going to put the front panel over down on it, then use a regular pencil I'll be using a 2.5 millimeter drill specifically for metal and then I'm going to be drilling rather slowly I'll do the same down here. So for the next part I have uh, this thing, which I really don't know what it's called in English. But uh, it's essentially for drilling treads into the uh, metal. And uh, this is what the tool looks like that uh, I use for that. Don't know what that's called either. If you do know what it's called, feel free to leave a comment. And then just pop it down, start turning as uh, straight down as you can. That's one down, one to go. Now let's put everything together. Before I put the heatsink in, we're going to have to solder some wires onto the uh, actual cob. I added some small channels here that should be able to uh, cover the solders. There's also a little bit of a gap between the uh, cob and the front of the uh, this cover, obviously, so it doesn't melt. The uh, first thing I can do here is just put in uh, the front panel and then I'll be hooking up the heatsink to that. And I'll do the same thing with the other side. And now I can put the uh, heatsink in, making sure the uh, wire is near the JST connector. Even if you do it backwards it doesn't really matter that much if you pick the long enough cable wire. I'm not really sure what the difference between a cable and a wire is. I never actually looked that up. If there is a difference. So, I'm not sure how well this is picking up here, uh, but uh, it is a little bit wobbly. But since this is printed in PLA, it should be rather easy to just uh, keep screwing and it'll uh, rip out the treading more or less from the front the plastic but that's fine because it's going to be uh, pushed in by the uh, aluminium heatsink. Do a little bit on each side little by little and not uh, too far I just want to make sure that it stops wobbling. So yeah that's the front panel but we're still going to need to uh, hook this up to a JST connector but before you do that consider uh, if you have a power supply like a bench power supply or uh, something like that then uh, what I would do is I would uh, test and make sure that these are actually wired upright because when I've ordered these uh, LED cobs from China sometimes they send them with the positive and negative in reverse which won't break the cob but uh, it won't light either so what I would do is uh, just test it first since uh, this design was printed with supports I'm also going to need to remove a little bit of uh, the support material I'll just use an X-Acto knife for that 
and then before gluing on the uh, JST connector I'm just going to make sure that it actually fits through here because I once made one of these and then it didn't fit through after I had glued so I had to print a new one I use a bit of paper because it always tends to drip I use a bit of old wire to uh, make sure it's nice and even across there and now before I solder on uh, the wire I'm just going to let it sit overnight to harden as usual because I can't remember which wire is which I'm just going to uh, put the pre-assembled wire in this might also be the last project that uses this exact uh, connector because I got a different uh, JST type really cheap from China where all the wires are pre-connected and that's going to save me a lot of time I put the uh, copper colored one on uh, positive and the grey one on negative so that's what I'm going to be connecting these two if you get it backwards you're going to have to re-solder but uh, it shouldn't break anything I really need to get a fan or something in here you know, let's actually do the sensible thing this time and use a uh, tweezer instead of my fingers. Now the wire shouldn't stand any chance of melting in this because um, I have tested the heatsink before and with the heatsink on it only gets to about uh, 45 degrees Celsius which is way below the melting point of this thing so this thing is about to turn off here in the background there it goes one thing if you're going to be soldering at home and if you're new to soldering that I would definitely recommend is uh, get yourself one of these timers because I forget to turn off the soldering iron all the time and with the timer it's just gonna turn off itself yeah, something like that should do be careful not to over tighten this because PLA is quite brittle and uh, you, you might end up breaking it I've done that with a few projects so I've got a couple of uh, a tiny 80 tiny I don't know how they're pronounced but tiny microcontrollers today and I gave one a try and it's quite interesting even if it's uh, very limited in uh, what you can do hardware wise here we go that's one box built, let's go and test it so I'm gonna hook it up to my bench power supply here set it to 12 volts oh this is gonna be bright if it works ooh bright that is bright Turn off that light, and yeah, it is really quite bright. Next up, I need to solder together all the microcontroller parts. These are the internal components that I'll be using. A few of these I need to attach to the case, which I haven't actually designed yet because I need to know how big it, the parts actually are when connected. So I'm just going to be putting those in a bucket for now, things that will go on the case. I'm going to start by connecting uh, components to uh, this tiny board. I think I might put them on somewhere like this and like like that. And then this somewhere in the middle. Because uh, that way I, I can modify an existing 3D print that I have. So, let's see. For this one, I am going to need 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 pins. Granted, one of these or rather two of these will not actually be connected to anything it's enough with five connections to the uh, microcontroller these headers were actually uh, included with the microcontroller but 
Since I'm going to be soldering directly onto the microcontroller, I'm just going to be using them for the uh, prototype board. That's the step down converter on. Next I'm going to connect the amplifier. The next thing will be to connect the MOSFET so we can turn the lamps on. This is why I have to wear shoes inside. So here's the gate and then I believe uh, this is drain and this is source. Or, but I want to put a resistor on the gate. 120 ohms. So the other two components that I have here that don't need to be connected directly to the uh, case are uh, two 10k resistors that I'll be using as pull down resistors. Now on my pro prototype I was actually using GPIO 36 and 37 but uh, those have different distinctions on uh, this version of uh, the dev kit so I'm instead going to be using GPIO 12 and 14 for it instead because uh, that's close to, to the ground pen just gonna twine these together cut off a bit then uh, stick these on ground And then I want one of these connected to uh, IO12, I think that, yeah, that's 12. And the other one connected to IO14. But I'm not going to solder this right now. I am, however, going to uh, cut off the legs a little bit here at the bottom. Because I'm also going to want to uh, pull a wire through these that will go to one of these buttons and then it's going to go to 3.3 volt. And before I stick any wire in there as well, I need to design a case, so I'm gonna go do that. Here's the case I designed with a lid and two buttons hot off the printer. It's a little bit, little bit roomy inside but I um, figured it was easier to do it that way so I'll have some more maneuverability when I'm piecing this together the first thing I'm going to do before I start uh, actually wiring any electronics into it would be to attach the pieces that need uh, glue and that's uh, these two uh, tiny JST connectors which are going to sit here on the sides and uh, these buttons and these use uh, these standard lab type buttons. I have a lot of these. I wanted to use these bigger ones because the bigger buttons are better buttons. And the way I've designed these is you simply just uh, put these on like so. And then uh, put them in this way, and then you'll have to glue them in there so that, so they uh, are stuck. But you can click them. Now there's one more thing, which is the the uh, numeric display. But uh, when I printed this, I accidentally made it, uh, I guess, a little bit too small. So. If you use a little bit of force, you can uh, just press it in, and it should sit quite well in there. You you could glue it, but uh, if you are going to glue it, I mean it's pretty stuck, hard, pretty solid in there right now. You could um, 
you should probably solder it in first before you uh, attach it. I need to make sure that uh, these JST connectors actually fit through. Use a piece of wire to uh, make sure it goes up on the sides as well. And make sure not to get super glue on your fingers because that stuff takes days to come off. I've never actually tried gluing this thing before, so I have no idea how it's going to work. This is take two. What I tried doing was using super glue on these and sticking them in to the socket. The problem with that is that the super glue is quite runny, so it uh, would get into the actual button mechanism and uh, just lock it up. So I'm going to replace it and this time I'm only going to be using some uh, good old fashioned hot glue. And there's uh, like four sockets here. As always it's not the prettiest thing but it works. Trying hard here not to burn my fingers. Don't do this at home, by the way. Exercise some sort of caution. Maybe use a tongue or something. Now I just gotta let this set. It's not very pretty. <laughs> but uh, I hope it works. And now I can at least test the buttons. Before I attach the screen, I'm going to uh, actually solder it in. I have two connectors here with uh, screws on, so I can just screw them in. No glue needed here. So what do I have here now? Here we have uh, the right button and the left button, which will be used to set the time. This here is the audio output. This is uh, a stereo plug, but I should be able to just connect uh, these two, which is the left and the right channel, and that would make it into mono. And uh, then we have the DC plug, which is uh, how we're going to get uh, 12 volts in. And then we have the uh, two JST connectors which will be going out to the actual lamps. As for internals, I now have uh, two pieces. This is the ESP32 dev module and then this that we built. This is the prototype board that we built and uh, with the MOSFET and uh, the amplifier which is going to uh, have the outputs to the stereo plug and the step down converter which is going to be used to uh, convert this uh, 12 volt DC input which is then going to go into the microcontroller uh, through the microcontroller's linear voltage regulator. I think the first thing I want to do is to hook up the audio. So it's going to need ground and it's going to need 3.3 volts. Next I need one wire on ground. I can use a thin wire. Now I have connected the 3 volts and I have connected the ground. Obviously I still need to connect uh, ground from the step-down converter over to ground on the microcontroller. I'll do that later after I've finished soldering these three. Because I can skip the SD and gain pins and move on to uh, the data in the bit clock, I think it's the bit clock, and uh, the left-right clock. So I'll put those on, starting from data in and going left. I'll put data in on GPIO 22, which is uh, down here, so it's not very far. So let's sort them onto the microcontroller. First we have the data in, which is on IO 22. Then we have the bit clock, which is on IO26. And finally the left-right clock on IO25. 
Then we need a ground connection between the step down converter and the microcontroller. And it doesn't matter which one of these uh, grounds you put it to because they're all connected. Next up I want to actually connect something to the outputs here. And those need to span the pretty much the entire length of the box. I believe this is a leg from the MOSFET. But that should work, hopefully. We'll see. My camera stand is now completely broken, so I'm gonna need one a new one of those as well. But let's continue. I'm gonna start by connecting all the wires needed to the microcontroller developer board. So then I can uh, slot that into place. To the display, I need two wires. And I put those on 19 and 23. 19 is up here and 23 is down there. Now on my breadboard test version I used uh, GPIO 35 and 36 I think, uh, or 36, 37, something like that. But as I stated before, those uh, don't exist on this one. So that's where I connected these two the resistors to ground from here. Uh, I can now put wires into these and uh, actually solder, solder the resistors in, the pull down resistors. Now I won't connect any screws just yet. It's uh, going to be held fairly decently in place by these wires pu pushing against the side. Because uh, I still need to connect things to uh, this board and I might have forgotten things. Because then it's uh, much less of a risk of the case breaking if I don't uh, screw it in and unscrew it over and over again. I'll switch to a smaller soldering tip. And I'm going to be attaching uh, the MOSFET source to uh, ground. And I also need a wire on the MOSFET drain Oops. that uh, should go to the JST connectors. I forgot uh, one additional wire that needs to go to a GPIO on the microcontroller and that's the one between the resistor for the uh, gate of the MOSFET and the GPIO 21. need one wire that should uh, go between the uh, raw input from the DC plug, so 12 volts, and the uh, LEDs. And I'll do the actual connections to the DC plug later. I think this is everything for this part, but before I can start hooking up the, all these wires that are now sticking out of, the, of uh, my circuitry, there is one more thing that I need to connect to the case and uh, I think that's uh, these two so that they're wired in parallel I should probably isolate that well, let's track down the loose wires Yep, that's wire 23, which needs to go to the to the clock. So I guess I'll solder on the clock now. And wire 23 literally goes to the clock on the clock, so. And GPIO 19 next, which is goes to the data input output. And then I'm going to need a connection to 3.3 volts. 3.3 volt and uh, ground hooked up. So now I'm going to connect those to the uh, clock as well. That's the clock all hooked up. So now I'll just push it back into place. 
And now I have these two, which go to the left and right button. I can't remember which one is which, but you can just change that in the software, so uh, it's no big deal. It doesn't matter what pin I soldered this to now. But um, as long as I do two on the same side, or diagonally across, then it should be fine. But first, let's get some solder on the wires. And now those need some 3.3-volt uh, connections. Time to connect the audio port, and uh, then all that's left to do is uh, to connect the step-down converter to the microcontroller. So I need to connect the uh, voltage output from the step-down converter over to the uh, diode going into the voltage regulator of the microcontroller. Now I need to connect the input to the DC plug. I'll start off up here with the uh, ground wire. And then the positive wire. And the positive lead goes on the big flat one. And the ground goes on uh, the one next to it. Before I plug it into the wall, I'm going to test it now with a 9 volt battery. And if it doesn't start smoking, we'll call that a success. It turns on. Does the clock turn on? Yep, there we go. You can see there is now 27 minutes past midnight here. Because uh, if I press a button, you can see that I set it at uh, 2315 to begin. The connections for the lamp should now be at 9 volts. Later on they'll be at 12 volts, but I'm using a 9 volt battery to test. And that's why they'll be 9 volts right now. But they're not. That means I must have wired something wrong. Here's where the GPIO turns on the MOSFET. So I'm gonna probe off the resistor to ground. Looks like it's not on. That means the issue might be software related. So it turns out there actually was an issue with the uh, software. And uh, it was caused by setting the uh, fade in timer to begin right before midnight. And uh, this time it should be at uh, maximum power. 8.91 volts. Yep, fair enough. Let's test the audio. So I'll plug in the headphones. Soothing white noise. What I've done here is I've uh, twined together two of these JST connectors just for testing. And if this works, I can uh, build some longer cables. I also got myself this uh, 12 volt power supply. I put uh, 12 volt up to 2 amps. Let's uh, plug it in and see what happens. Yep, we do get light though. Quite a lot of it. Okay, let's uh, try with two lamps. Okay, here we have at full power. And it is pulling about 500 milliamps, looks like. Which is weird because it's uh, supposed to be doing um, about uh, 1000, but. Uh, It is flickering a bit, so I'm thinking that might be the power supply. I'm gonna try with uh, the regular power supply. I think it might have been the uh, power strip that I was using that uh, was causing the flashing. I'm not quite sure because I plugged it in over here by my soldering station and the flashing was fine. It didn't do any flashing. But uh, in either case I'm going to need a cable to hook up the lamps. So here I've cut off the pre-connected uh, JST connectors and I'm going to add a little bit of solder to them. 
and then I'm going to use about a meter of this wire. Then I'll put a bit of a heat shrink over that. And I've uh, stuck another piece of heat shrink on since uh, I'm also going to need to connect the other side. Okay, there we go. Yep, everything seems to be in order and it doesn't seem to be flashing right now. So I think the next step will be to clean my room and set this stuff up in there. Here's how I set it up. This is in my bedroom. And I've connected an audio port and a 12 volt adapter. The uh, audio port is connected to a small stereo beneath my bed. And that way it can play some white noise in case one of my neighbors gets really noisy in the morning or something like that. Currently the lamps are about four minutes into uh, the uh, wake up cycle. I'm going to turn off the ceiling lamp and you can see that it's uh, still really quite dark. This is about five minutes into the sunrise. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a time lapse over the 30 minute emulated sunrise and see how it works. A day later and I had some issues with the uh, audio in that whenever it looped around it would make a popping sound and then when I went online to look that stuff up I found out that I don't even need the uh, amplifier at all I can just use a single uh, GPIO pin and a one kilo ohm resistor now there is a, a small drawback to that is that uh, I'm only going to be able to output white noise through that method but uh, I don't have any alarms or anything set on this thing because I prefer to use my phone for that since I tend to change my alarm pretty much every day. Uh, I'm going to unsolder this and then I'm going to uh, solder a 1 kilo ohm resistor onto the uh, positive wire and then put that on a GPIO pin and just move uh, ground directly to uh, ground. So to remove this I'm going to be using some soldering wick, I guess it's called. The soldering wire, some, something along that. It uh, just sucks up the solder when you heat it. I'll attach a 1 kilo ohm resistor to uh, IO5. And then the positive audio lead I will attach to uh, the resistor. Actually, before I do that, Get some heat shrink on there. And lastly, I'm going to connect the uh, ground back to where it was before. The same pin. Okay, time to upload some new software. All in all, this project took about a week's worth of evenings. If I had to guess, I'd say the part costs landed at about a quarter of a store-bought wake-up light. So whereas it would probably be more worthwhile to just go out and buy a lamp from the market, there's a certain sense of accomplishment from making your own items and that you actually use frequently. And if you like this project, consider subscribing, since I'd really like getting to 100. In any case, I'll see you in the next project.